Hello everyone and welcome to Wayfarers East, another Heroclix tutorial. In the last video we were exploring what a specific Heroclix character dial looks like and what all the different things on that dial mean. In this video we're going to be exploring the character board or the playing field that the game takes place on. This specific board is from the Avengers vs. X-Men series which just came out in December of 2013. Now there are a couple different things that need to be identified on the board. As you can see in the bottom corner here, it has the Wiz Kids Hero Clicks logo. And then the universe that the set or the map is from, in this case is Marvel. And then sometimes will be a logo or something along those lines. And this logo is the AVX or Avengers vs. X-Men logo. Above that logo will be sometimes rules or different things. This one just talk, talks about the name of the map which is Avengers Tower and then below it says that it's an indoor map which we'll get to in a second. Now if you look at the whole spectrum of the map you'll notice that on both sides there are pink or purple sections covering the left and the right hand sides of the map. This refers to your starting area. At the very beginning of the map, you will place all of your characters within this section before the game starts. When the character is here, that means he's ready to start. You wouldn't want to put your character out here because that would be against the rules. So if you have a team consisting of the Motorized Patriot, Robin, Captain America, and Gimli, you would put them something like that to represent that they're at the beginning of the map in their starting area. When the map or the game starts, sometimes it'll look more like this, and the starting area can still be accessed, but this will signify that they're no longer in the starting area. There are a lot of other colors and symbols on the map that should be observed. Now if you'll notice, there are green squares, as can be notified right here. There are blue squares also right there. There are squares outlined in red over here. And then there are also brown squares which are right here. Now, each one signifies a different type of terrain in the overall map. The brown squares signify blocking terrain, meaning terrain that is impassable by an average everyday character. If a character were standing right here, he would not be able to move through or in the blocking terrain. It would require him to move around it, which he could do like this, but he would not be able to move through it, unless he had a specific trait or ability signifying otherwise. Also, if you are in an indoor stage, somebody who has the ability to fly, like Thor, which is signified by his flight ability on his character dial, would not be able to fly over the blocking terrain because it is given that blocking terrain goes all the way up to the ceiling in an indoor map. Something along those lines. Next we have hindering terrain, which is marked by the green squares. Hindering terrain is similar to blocking terrain as it is something that gets in the way of your character when moving. However, it is possible to move in and out of hindering terrain. When a character moves into hindering terrain, he has to stop. It's an automatic has to stop inside the terrain and end his movement immediately. Now, people with the ability to fly or specific abilities that allow them to move through green can move freely in and out of hindering terrain without paying any penalty. But an average person like Captain America, when he would be moving, if say he wanted to move here, but then he wanted to move here afterwards, he would have to stop inside the first green that he touches. Now let's say, for argument's sake, that there is a hindering terrain here, and there's a hindering terrain here. If a character is moving along, moving along, and he comes to right here, and he wants to move over there, he may. He may move through those two, 
But then once he gets to the other side, he has to stop as if he was inside the hindering terrain. Now, he's no long, he's not in the hindering terrain, he just has to stop as if he were. When a character is in hindering terrain at the beginning of your turn and chooses to move out of it, you may move like you would normally be able to move your movement ability, which we will get to in a future video, but you would end up having it instead. So if his movement is 9, as you can see there on the dial, my finger's not in the way, his movement is 9, it would become halved, 4.5, and then you would round up, so it would become 5. So you'd only be able to move 5 squares once he moves out of hindering terrain. The next type of terrain is the blue, or water terrain. Water terrain has a similar effect when moving as green hindering terrain, as in when you move into it, you have to stop. Now, when moving out of it, you do not have to have your movement. You can move freely in and out as if you or nothing changed. It's just simply when moving inside of it. Also, one thing I forgot to mention with hindering terrain, it also affects things such as line of fire when making a ranged combat attack. So motorized patriot was standing right here, and he wanted to shoot Captain America, which is standing right here. His line of fire would be drawn right here in a straight line from the middle of his square to the middle of Captain America's square. However, he is shooting through this green hindering terrain square. This would cause Captain America to get a plus one to his defensive value when the attack is being made. So usually firing through hindering terrain is something that you would want to avoid if at all possible. If it's not, then sometimes you just have to take that risk. The next type of terrain on our map, and the last one is from what I can see here, is the red. Now if you notice that this platform here has red outlining the surroundings in a kitty corner fashion and coming up to the end of the map. This red signifies a change in terrain. As you will look on these stairs right here, you'll see that there's a number one and a number two, signifying the first floor and the second floor. When a person is moving towards the first floor and he has only the standard move ability, he must use the stairs to get from one floor to the next. A flyer, as you can see with Thor, is able to ignore the stairs, he can fly straight up them. And then there's also people who have certain abilities that allow them to go over red. But just a standard rule of thumb to remember is that when you're a standard walker, like Captain America is, you have to use the stairs from getting from one train to the next. Now there are a few added bonuses with elevated terrain, first of which is line of fire. If Captain America is standing right here and he wants to make a ranged combat attack at Thor, normally he wouldn't be able to if he was sitting on regular terrain because motorized patriot would be in his way. However, if he's on elevated terrain, he is seen almost as if he is higher up than motorized patriot and can still see Thor at that distance. Also, if motorized patriot is standing here, Captain Americans can, can still make a ranged combat attack towards motorized patriot even though they are considered to be adjacent, which normally is something that you are not able to do unless you have a specific ability. That pretty much sums it up for hindering terrain, blocking terrain, and elevated terrain, which also sums it up for the end of our map. So that's a basic crash course run through of how to be familiar with a Heroclix map. Now in these videos, if I do happen to forget anything or mismention anything, I will be sure to include it in later videos or put an annotation on saying, you know, I missed something. So that's all for this video. I hope you liked it. Make sure you like and subscribe and share with your friends. And check out Wayfarer's East for all other Heroclix tutorials for the month of January 2014. I hope you enjoyed and you have a great day.